Hello, and welcome to the June 2015 Penultimate Woodshop Tour. Took me a second there. Um, lots going on. Uh, you know, tends to be either a really quiet month or a really busy month. Not too many, not too much in the middle. This has been a really busy month, and it looks to be a busy month coming up and a busy summer. We've got lots on the plate in terms of upcoming projects and uh, half finished projects that need to be completed. So let's get on with the tour. Um, here you're looking at the right corner of the shop as you first come in as I always start the tour. There's a big piece of melamine. I use that as a sled when I'm running boards through the planer. I'll hot glue them to that and then run it through the planer when they're wider than my jointer. Behind that you got my Craig jig, my tapering jig, and down there at the bottom you still got this old concrete step that I've yet to take out. Uh, some scraps of plywood just sitting there. Here's my bandsaw. Um, I still need to do the little bit of tune-up to that back guide but even without that, I am absolutely loving this saw. Um, there, well, here in the foreground, that's a block of LVL with a frame screwed up to it. That frame I've had for longer than the block of LVL. I've had the frame for probably 10, 12 years. That frame actually moved with me. You can see by all the colors, that's a support frame I use when I'm painting. Um, so I had that out in the driveway over the weekend. I was putting uh, some varnish. Um, what am I using? Lacquer. I'm using lacquer on the trophy. I'll get to that in a second. Behind there you can see my, the masonry tools that are still sitting over there. I kind of aborted my process of cleaning that out and I really need to get back to that and just do it. Um, as we come up here on the table saw, here it is being used as a bench. Um, I'll talk about what's in the... Uh, let's talk about what's in the foreground first. So here's the trophy. This has... Well I flipped everything over and I've got five coats of lacquer on the back on the bottom and so far I've got four coats on the top I think I'm gonna go another two it's almost there not quite um, you see how beautiful that that grain is it's almost a let me get the light out of the way it's almost a crotch pattern here in the walnut uh, absolutely beautiful boards so the blue sections are where the bottles are gonna go I didn't want to get any, uh, any I keep blanking on lacquer. I don't know why, but I didn't want to get any lacquer there because um, that's where I'm going to glue the bottles in. So this gets three bottles, they come up, tops of the bottles go into there, and then three more bottles, they come up, tops of the bottles go into there, and then this is where the mug sits, and that'll be a, a multi-tiered one, and that's the big extended base I made with plenty of room for them to attach plaques onto it. Over here, you can see excess sanding blocks and things. That's just my headphones that I dropped there when I was taking them off last time. And my tape measures. And if you come around here, more sanders and just other miscellaneous things that I've taken out. If you see these red cabinets, which I've had in the shop for a very long time, if you go back to some of the older shop tours, you'll see a stack of them over in that cabinet, actually on top of that that uh, step I need to take out and they were next to each other. Um, well, I've been working over the past uh, say month to every time I'm in the shop I clear a little bit out and I'm trying to weed through and the stuff I don't use that's in there get it out. So this box is kind of miscellaneous stuff I don't really use. This box is all sanding stuff that I don't really use. And if we go through and look, all the blue tape marks oh, empty drawers. So you can see on this side I've got one empty drawer and on this side, this blue tape underneath there, I've actually only got one drawer left with things that are full. Um, and much of this is just miscellaneous drill bits and stuff. So I actually ordered a cheap plastic toolbox to throw this in so I can put it up in the attic because I don't know, I'm reluctant to just take all these all this miscellaneous drilling stuff and get rid of it. I want to be able to find it, but I, I don't need it down here. You know, why do I need four five thirty seconds bits? Oh, but here's my 11 64th bit. That's going to come in handy. Now, this can all go, um, all go upstairs. Anyway, so the reason I'm doing all that is because this column here I'm going to get rid of. And then I'm going to take the table saw and slide the table saw back. So I don't create a pitch point right here because when I take the planer and I slide it over to use, because right now, if I want to use it, 
the dust collectors in the way. So I, it's on wheels, it's not a big deal, I slide it out to use it, but when I slide it out, I create a pitch point here and I can't get around the planer to use it. So if by moving this forward, I'll be able to get around the planer. Also, I've mentioned this before, but I've absolutely decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna set the fence. Let's set the fence now, is there stuff on it? Set the fence to somewhere in the ballpark of 25 inches, which will let me cut that much off. And that'll just push it to the wall that much more, and wouldn't be that much more space. I mean, with the setup now, with the cabinets there, and the bandsaw, it's not like I can put <laughs> anything that wide through it. It is on wheels, I can always slide it out, it's not the end of the world. But in practice, if I got something that big, I'm breaking out the track saw. So, I could probably even go less than that, but I'm figuring 24 inches, that lets me rip a piece of plywood in half, in theory. Um, so, you know, I, I could probably take it down to 18, but it's just going to win me a couple more inches, just make the space that much more efficient. So, I'm close to that. I would hope that by the next shop tour, those cabinets are gone, and with any luck, I've cut the bandsaw also. Um, so, that's what's going on there. As so we come around, the next, the next project in the shop that I need to tackle, which is probably not going to happen for a while, is this bucket full of clamps. And I need to figure out, A, a design for some sort of clamp rack, or clamp racks based on the many different types of clamps that are in there, and then I need to figure out where I'm going to fit it. Because my wall space is um, kind of at a premium, <laughs> as we do a quick shoot around. So, that's an upcoming project. This cart... I love, and it's done, or it's functionally done. A couple of things I need to do, but this is new since the last shop tour. So in the bottom, I've got these three drawers that I keep sending accessories in. In these two drawers, I keep sand, sandpaper in. And it, it takes... 7 inch grinder, the 6 inch Rotex, the 5 inch Rotex, the 4 or 3 and a half inch Rotex, this RAS 115, which is a beautiful, beautiful grinder. I love this thing. Um, here we've got all the random orbit ones and a fleet of grinders. Um, so this is my sanding cart, and what it's really going to be useful for is shaping and power shaping and smoothing and all that sorts of good stuff and it's going to keep it all at hand and easily accessible so I'm very excited to use that I've used it a little bit and so far it's very good a couple things I need to do is I'll probably put a face on those drawers um, I'll probably put some sort of a base here I probably should have initially and this way I can slide cords in there I've got this power strip here that I need to mount to it somehow and I've got over behind the wall back here, behind the table saw, you can't even see, can you? Uh, no, you can't even see, it's back there on the floor underneath that hose, is my original vacuum boom arm that was hanging on the wall right here years and years ago before I finished the shop walls. And I've got another boom arm back here. That one with the hook is actually where my Fordham hangs but it's, it's back in that pile, there's another boom arm. One of them is going to get attached to this, and I think I may pick up another length of a vacuum hose that lives in this cart, so that I basically will plug the cart, the power strip, and the vacuum hose into the CT, and then it, it kind of is all self-contained there, and I'll switch the hose between the different devices, and I just take the cord, because many of them not the corded grinder, not the corded RS-111, but all the other sanders will take the same cord and I just plug it into their bottom. So that's the ultimate plan and I'm so far very pleased with that. Here on the bench, some scraps left over from the finishing process on the trophy. These are some sets of drill bits that I'm going to combine all into one and put the rest up in the attic. Just come around here. This Outfeed for my miter saw is filled up with more accessories from the trophy. It's going to be really nice to get the trophy out of here. Um, there's the picture frame that I can't use the picture in it anymore, so I need to come up with something else to put in it. I'm not quite sure. Um, 
the joiner, which I still need to make the bases for. This is really a tour of what I still need to do and what's not done in the shop, as I guess they always are. Uh, here's a, a, in a salute to Matt Vandalist. I did not fold up the miter saw. Um, so I'm not inclined to hit my hip on that because you can see it's well short of the joiner, but as I was talking with him about uh, through the kickback and wood talk, how I usually leave it is like that. And then I can't hit it even if I want to. And what I find what I find is that with the joiner here, I'm less inclined to fold that saw up because I, I'm never in that little inside corner. But without the joiner here, before the joiner took up all this massive floor space, then I was very religious about tucking it in because it would get in the way and when you fold it over like that, it, it stays back. Um, and just in case someone hasn't seen this, this is the Bosch Glide. You can see at 90, it's just barely touching the wall. And what you're looking at is it's essentially framed out like a window. My wall is a double 2x4 a jam full of insulation, that's an R40 wall. But right here, and let me back up so you can see, that recess is just plywood. And I ran a header across, and I've got jack and king studs on the sides. It's framed just like you would frame a window opening, but I never cut it open. And because I couldn't leave it completely uninsulated, I took one inch foil-faced polyisocyanurate and I put it in the back. So that back section only has one inch of insulation, whereas the other sections in the wall have seven inches of insulation. Um, so it's not quite the R40 there, but it's still air sealed and well insulated. And it lets me put that much of the saw into the wall. So if I bring the camera around here, you can see how much of the saw is set into the wall, and I won that much more space. That's, um, let me see, it's a seven inch wall, and that's one inch, so that's six inches of space into the wall that I want. And then I set the saw back as far as I could and still have enough room to swing the saw. And then when I was building this thing, I built the table out just deep enough so that when I slid the saw all the way over, it would be behind the table. I was never going to build a table that would take it, you know, when it was swung all the way out here, but this way, when I swing it all the way in, I don't beat up the saw. And if memory serves, the table is 14 inches off the wall, which is not insignificant, but previous to this uh, Bosch Glide, I had the DeWalt 12 inch with the big rails, and the cabin, the table I made for that DeWalt was 36 inches deep. So. 36 to 14, and I think it's 14, I, I should take a tape out, but it's about 14. It was a dramatic, dramatic savings. When I first brought that other table into my shop, and it came out to about here, I was like, you know, okay, we gotta re rethink this. Uh, but that saw, I find, fits into this space amazingly well. And for anyone who's really considering it, what I find to be the critical measurement is from the fence to the back, because that determines how far off the wall the saw has to be, because again, you can always fold the front, but you can't fold the back, because you have to be able to use it. Um, from the fence to the back of the saw, I don't remember what the measurement is on this Bosch, but I was seriously considering the Capex when I bought this, and I went to a store that had them both, and I took a tape measure out, and the Capex from the fence to the back is actually two inches deeper than the Bosch's. So if I had a Capex, and I slid it away the same way, the body of the saw would have to be two inches further up to accommodate the back of the saw and the table would have to be two inches deeper and it would just take up two inches more of the shop which I'm happy not to give up and I have no complaints at all about this Bosch. So enough about that miter saw. Come around here, nothing too fancy. It's my homemade cyclone which continues to work excellent. Someday I will break down and make a video just about the cyclone but it is fantastic. Uh, anybody has questions about it in the meantime just hit me up with an email or comment on this video and I'll fill you in on the cyclone and uh, here's the planer and my wood storage that's, uh, that's about it so fairly busy shop time we've got the trophy just about to be wrapped up of a project for my accountant I'm just about to start that's gonna be a very quick project for his desk and I have a little project to do for the bathroom that I need to get wrapped up um, then at that point I'm either gonna make a window seat for another client 
or jump into the sculpted rocker. I hope I get to jump into the sculpted rocker, but I may have to do the window seat before the sculpted rocker. But in either case, I should have my, my walnut for the sculpted rocker should be in in about a week or so. And, uh, and we're going to go to town on that as quick as I can. I've been watching all the videos and posting to my chaircast audio podcast, uh, the radio diary about the sculpted rocker. So that's where we stand. Thanks again for watching, and I hope your shop is coming along nicely.